Did you know that in 2024, China installed more new industrial robots than the rest of the world combined? This is not a forecast. It is a fact. It happened last year. Most people missed it. Now we see the public face of this quiet revolution. There's a robot called the R1. It looks friendly. It has a simple, clean design. It can greet you in a hotel lobby or guide you through a shopping mall. Many will see it and think it is just another new gadget, a toy for the modern age. They would be making a grave mistake. The R1 is not a toy. It is a symbol. It is a signpost pointing to a dramatic shift in global power. This is not a story about one machine. It is a story about an entire system. The R1 represents a new reality. China is no longer just assembling technology designed elsewhere. It is building the entire ecosystem from the ground up. Thank you for tuning into your Sassy Gateway YouTube channel. Subscribe if you want more straightforward content like this about Sassy and cybersecurity topics. So what is the R1? In simple terms, it is a general purpose humanoid robot. It is designed to interact with people in service environments. Think of a concierge in a hotel. Think of a greeter at a trade show. Think of an assistant in a retail store. The R1 can perform these basic tasks. It uses cameras and sensors to see the world around it. It uses artificial intelligence to understand simple voice commands and answer common questions. Its arms and hands can gesture, point, carry a water bottle, carry a folder. It can navigate a crowded room without bumping into people. It is not science fiction. It is a practical tool built for today's world. The true significance of the R1 is its accessibility. It is not a multi-million dollar research project locked away in a university lab. It is a commercial product, affordable and easy to deploy. Imagine a chain of 1,000 stores. Each buys an R1 to greet customers and answer basic questions. This frees, frees up human employees for more complex tasks. Why can China build the R1 so cheaply and so quickly? The answer is not a state secret. It is the supply chain. For the past two decades, China has been methodically building a domestic ecosystem for robotics. This is not just about a few large factories. It is a dense network of thousands of smaller companies. One makes high precision gears, one makes small electric motors, one makes laser navigation sensors, one writes software for facial recognition. They sit in the same in industrial parks a few miles apart. This proximity is a superpower. In the West, uh, windows from one state, lumber from another, custom fittings from overseas, each step adds shipping, delays, and cost. In China's hubs, it is like the lumber yard, the window factory, and the hardware store all on one street. An engineer can get a custom motor in 48 hours, not six weeks. This speed is a weapon, enabling rapid prototyping, fast testing, quick iteration. Intense local competition drives down cost. A firm can get quotes from 10 sensor suppliers in one city. Prices fall. That's why R1 can sell for a fraction of a comparable Western robot. It's not just lower labor costs, it's systemic efficiency. The West once dominated chips and precision servos. That is changing. Chinese firms now produce more of these critical parts. In 2023, Chinese robot makers bought more domestically made servo motors and controllers than imported ones. This is a turning point. It means growing independence. China is building a fortress and the R1 is one of the first soldiers to walk out of its gates. For decades, the most prestigious brands in robotics were from Germany, Japan, the United States, companies like KUKA, Fanuc, ABB. If a Chinese factory wanted the best robots, it bought foreign. That era is now over. In 2023, domestic robot makers outsold all foreign competitors combined inside China. This is a seismic shift. The world's largest robot market is now dominated by its own companies. It is a protected home field that serves as a launch pad for global expansion. This dominance provides two vital resources, capital and data. Profits are poured back into R&D, bigger factories, top talent. A company selling 100,000 robots has far more resources than one selling 5,000. Scale wins. Deployed by the thousands, robots like R1 collect an ocean of real-world information used to train and refine AI. A robot that has navigated 1,000 hotel lobbies is smarter. A robot that has answered a million questions is better at conversation. First, cultivate a massive protected market. Second, let fierce internal competition breed champions. Third, use scale and capital to go global. The R1 follows this playbook 
Success at home is the beginning, a springboard to Europe, Southeast Asia, the Middle East, and Latin America. It is the foundation for a concerted push abroad, and the West must understand what that means for. The R1 is not a military weapon, it carries folders, not firearms, but the rise of China's robotics industry poses a clear and present danger to Western economic and strategic interests. This is not about a robot apocalypse. It is about a slow erosion of power and influence. First jobs, factory jobs, service jobs. As the tech improves, more service work will be automated. The nation that leads this wave reaps huge gains. Others face disruption. Second, technological dependency. If one nation dominates production from the simplest motors to the most complex AI chips, the rest become its customers. That leader can control price, control supply, control access, and in crisis, cut off critical components. Third, civilian and military tech are linked. The same AI and sensors power both. By dominating commercial robotics, China strengthens its military base, funded in part by global purchases. The R1 is a warning in plain sight, a calm, friendly symbol of a tectonic shift. We in the West have grown comfortable. We believe in our legacy, but legacy does not win the future. Action does. See this as a strategic, long-term competition. The choice is simple, but not easy. Act now, rebuild our industrial commons, invest in supply chains, accelerate innovation, or do nothing, and watch power shift in silence. The time to act is now.